Hi, I'm Atul. I'm in London. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm in Burnley, Lancashire. I'm an online A-level chemistry tutor, and we're just going to have a look at rate equations. Sounds good. Okay. Right, I'll share my screen. And here we go, finding rate equations using initial rates data for reactants uh, A and B. So we'll have to see how the reactants A and B affect the rate of this reaction at different concentrations. So the first thing we'll have a look at is A. And we see for experiments one and two, the concentration of B is staying the same. The concentration of A is doubling. So that's times by two. Now, if we look at the effect of doubling that on the rate, we can see that the rate has quadrupled or times by four, which is times two to the power two. And therefore, A is second order. And then we have a look at uh, the effect of changing the concentration of B. And this time, if you look at experiments one and three, A has stayed the same, but B has doubled. Now, if we look at experiments one and three for the rate, we can see that the rate hasn't changed at all. So the doubling of B has had no effect on the rate. And so we say that B is zero order. So we know that the rate is proportional to the concentration of A squared. And then we, we can replace the proportion with uh, equals the rate constant, so our rate equation would be rate equals the rate constant k times the concentration of a to the power 2. And that's our rate equation. Now, once we've come up with the rate equation, we can find out what the rate constant is for this reaction just by rearranging. So we can say k is equal to rate for the concentration of A squared. And we can take any one of the experiments. Uh, so we'll choose experiment one. We'll say K equals the initial rate, which is 10, over the initial concentration of A for experiment one is three. So we've got three squared, which is 10 over 9, which is 1 and 1 ninth. And then we need to find the units. So instead of putting numbers in the equation, we'll put the units. So the units of rate are moles per decimeter cubed per second. And the units of concentration are moles the decimeter cubed squared. So we'll put in another moles per decimeter cubed. And the moles per decimeter cubed cancel. And that, if we move the units on the bottom to the top, the signs of the powers change. So that gives us the units moles to the minus one, dm to the plus three seconds to the minus one. So our rate constant is one and one ninth moles to the minus one dm to the plus three seconds to the minus one. Sounds great, yeah. Um, just putting my maths hat on I suppose for a little while. Presumably students need to be fairly fluent with um, knowing their proportionality and unit conversions and cancelling units, etc., and uh, all that already. Yes. <clears throat> uh, students can get away with just remembering that the rate is equal to k something, so they don't have to go from the proportion to the equals k. 
that's just really explaining how it comes about. Um, but certainly for coming up with the units, there's quite a bit of um, knowing about indices and powers for maths there. That one over x is x to the minus one. And that's why the signs of the powers change as we move the units from the bottom to the top. Mm, okay. And in this case, I suppose um, k may have different units depending on the order of the uh, of the equation. I suppose I mean the order of being similar to polynomial orders in maths. I guess. Yes. Uh, this uh, second order equation like this will always have these units, um, but it's easier to actually work out the units rather than remember that a second order is always those units. It'd be easy to get those units mixed up. Uh, but yes, the first order rate equation would have different units to a second order to a third order. But the method of working them out is the same. Brilliant. Nice bit of a chemistry lesson for me as well. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much, Paul. And uh, yeah, bye for now. Okay. Thanks, Asul. Bye.